Welcome everybody back to the Domcast. This is episode sixteen or Domino. seventeen. Yeah, see, I forget every time I come on here. I should start looking before I start the. Yeah. Anyways, we are working with one co-host this week. Rod could not make it, so he was E. Say what's up to people. What up? What up? Uh, podcast world. This is Eric Silencia. I'm here. Yep, and today is Wednesday. This is going to be Game 3 of the NBA Finals. Uh, we don't spend so much time talking about the actual game on the day because obviously this comes out on Saturday, so whatever will have happened. Yeah, I saw, I saw that uh, uh, comments like, yo, this is like four days ago. Yeah, yeah it right. was funny because like, we talked about the Finals for all of five minutes last right, week. Right, right, And like, the other part was about the shoes. It was about like evergreen topics. Yeah, yeah, And dude yeah. was like, yeah, why'd you post this? <laughs> After yeah, the finals, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. with my, my G, it was five minutes like, yeah, about yeah. the finals and the rest right, was. Right, right. You could, you could listen to that pod, whatever. Yeah. Anyways. So, uh, I guess we can. Uh, so, you want to talk about uh, if can 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 this team be good if, it, if the, the roles were reversed? Oh, KD sure. We can go to that Curry. one. Because uh, so, yeah, there was a fan that asked, would the Warriors be a top team without Curry? We're talking about, like, obviously, if they were healthy. We're talking about if they had. top team mean, like, what, top 10 in the league? Top 5 in the league? I did. The question is pretty ambiguous. It said, "Would the Warriors be a top team without Curry?" And, and we're we're imagining you gotta healthy. Have it, like, at least a top five record. You think they would? That's, I'm saying that's top. That's okay. top player. Okay, top yeah. team. So at least top five record. So this would be a top team without Steph Curry. Yeah, I think they could generate wins without him. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they'd be a top team. It's like if you have Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson and Draymond Green still there, it that, you know that's such a weird dynamic for the Warriors, right? Because we talk about how much Curry does, we talk yeah. about his value to a team, his gravity, and all that. Obviously, they would not be as good without him. Just like they're not as good without Kevin Durant. Of course, very obviously, they're still a top team without Kevin Durant. And right another now. thing <laughs> is, um, we talking about the whole season, not just a couple of games. So you got time to adjust systems, right? What's be more effective without Curry, but KD? So. I had to bring them stats of what without KD. I mean, what Curry without KD. But we're talking about a whole season. You have time to adjust for for rotations and all that. So I think it should be a top five t- record team. So then that goes to because that just speaks to how good the Warriors actually are. The fact you can have an MVP player and still be a top team if he's gone. That speaks That's to crazy, that. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a fan that asked, "Did Kevin Durant ruin Steph Curry's legacy in the way that Shaq is air quotes ruined Kobe's legacy?" Because people always say that Kobe Bryant was carried by Shaq, which is stupid. That yeah, that's stupid. not a true thing, anyways. Stupid, if you yeah. actually, but anyways, that's I, a narrative. I, just, I think it slowed it down. Slowed it down. And pl- it's a combination of how he lost in 2016. Yeah, right. Because right, Curry right. was the face of the league. He was, yeah, 2016. That 7-3-9 yeah. team, they was, it was Curry, Curry, Curry. LeBron got it back. And then when KD showed up, we started looking at Curry funny. Oh, he choked. So I think it slowed down his, his you know, his, his, you know his, his ceiling. But, you know, it happens, man. You got KD with you. Because the thing I always look at is, uh, you know, specifically with basketball, is the way we remember things is never how we live through it. So sure. as we're going through the moment, we have these nights where we look and say, especially if, if uh, the Warriors are raising their fourth title here in a couple of days yeah, or whatever, we're yeah. going to say, you're all praise to Curry, all the praise in the world and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But I think as the years pass, people are going to look back and say, well, how many of those years could they have even realistically lost when well, they had well, Kevin Durant? Well, to be honest, I think it, I think it slowed down KD's and Curry's. Oh, it definitely saw it. Yeah, because most of the hate and attention went to KD. Even though, even though uh, KD is coming to the Warriors, I still think Curry is the shack in this equation. Really? Yeah, because Curry is certified already. He got one already. Okay. You know, he probably he probably getting respect from his peers because we see KD so much. But I just think Kobe is the KD in this situation. I get, I get where you're going with you know it, even though Shaq because hadn't Curry won before still, Kobe. You know, it's yeah. just his system, his team. We win better yeah. winning percentage without you. Yeah. So I think, even though it's weird, but I think Curry is the Shaq in this equation, even though not skill-wise. But you know what I mean? It's like Oh, no, I, I get what you're like saying. How because they were, How they are perceived. Yeah, I get what you're saying because people look at Kevin Durant with most of the criticism because they feel like he has never done his own thing. Yeah. He's like never, you, could, you could use the same Kobe take. For KD, where well, you had you would join the war, where well, you had Shaq, so I, I, you know, and that's exactly why. Kobe, that's funny, like how we talk about like Kevin Durant maybe leaving this summer. That's right. exactly why Kevin Durant might leave. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or that's exactly why Kobe left Shaq is because right. he was saying, oh, they're gonna say I always had Shaq, and they're gonna say he could never be the own, uh, his guy in his own team. Yeah. So that's why he left. Now that's kind of narratives, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm going to go to another. Yeah, person. I do. Yeah, it's crazy. I, 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 I th- even though. I think KD takes the more hit, of course, because he joined the team. 
I just think Kurt. We just forgot about Curry because of Katie. But right, we, we, right. We, if you we watch the eye test, you know what time it is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I just yeah. think it did slow it down because, but it's also a combination of how he lost, man. Because there's a lot of you know, I, I still get this a lot. Like whenever I do an unpopular opinion <laughs> video, there's people that say things like Steph Curry has never actually earned a legitimate championship to this point. Who? The, I said Steph Curry. They say uh, like he hasn't earned a legitimate one to this point because they say 2015 was injuries. Which again, you beat who's in front of you. They did what they were supposed to do, like that. You know, but people put they say the same, same thing about LeBron and the uh, Le- Dr- Draymond suspension. People bring that up, but then they, you know, the counter to that is that Draymond came back and they still lost. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, momentum not a thing. Okay. Yeah, right. you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that that is the narrative out there uh, for some people is that Steph. Yo, 2015 was the injuries. Uh, 17, 18, you had like an unbeatable super team. There was right. like you're the most ex super team in history. I think that this year would probably be the first championship that people really look at and, of his like the one out of four people will look at and say like, damn, I respect this one. Especially if Kevin Durant don't come back. Yeah. And the way it's going right now, yeah, tie series. He's he's playing pretty good so far too. It's also kind of I know it's strange, but it's kind of weird that you are a superstar MVP caliber player and you need. A energy guy to win. What do you mean? Like the Draymond. Draymond is, is, would never be as good as Curry or Clay, but the fact that you needed him hey. just to set the tone. It's, it sounds strange for a superstar. It does, yeah. But that's how you. So you're saying like it's strange that like Curry's the, not the emotional Dray, leader. When Draymond went down for that game, like why y'all couldn't get it together? Which like, game? The, 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 the suspension game. Yeah, back in it 2016. It's strange you depend on someone. If you're a superstar, you MVP caliber player. Right, you need right. someone like him to. Get, hey, that's how important. That's how Crazy. important he is. That's how important every piece is to that Warriors team. It's funny they're so good together, but you take one piece away from the equation, all of a sudden you know they got to find ways to compensate. Well, yeah, but and somebody I, I always can't. does. That's why they're such an amazing team because somebody normally somebody always does. 2016, you know, whatever happened, they lost. Yeah, yeah. That was Dream One, and then they lost Bogey too. I think that's what people right. forget about Game Five in oh, 2016. Yeah, that was when things really got out of control. Is when Bogey went down. And then yeah. uh, they, it was open field in the paint. Oh, yeah, like Festus Azili couldn't stop fouling LeBron. He was, he was in the game for too long. Who? Uh, Festus. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Festus Azili. Yeah, because yeah, LeBron he got that switch on Azili, and it was yeah, like I don't know what, what the plan was. Then, yeah, it was barbecue but, chicken. Yeah, I understand. It's strange that. They got a weird dynamic over there. Hey, it's the a team. System, the, 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 Curry is the most important. He's a system base. But Draymond is the emotional leader. But KD is the most talented. <laughs> it is weird. Somebody, everyone has a really important title. It's that is crazy. funny. Yeah, even yeah. though they're so good and they could do without one of those. Yeah. It's like every everybody plays their role perfectly. Right. Draymond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The emotional and I don't leader. I think no NBA history has the type of di- dynamic they got. Well, no, that's why they're the greatest team ever. Yeah, like, I don't like, think at this point. I guess we can get to that because I don't know how much we've ever talked about that before. But or is it definitely the greatest team ever? Like, yeah. especially with this dynasty, like it, from a talent standpoint, from the roles that have been played from each player. Yeah, because even though Jordan, Jordan is the best of all of them, the second person is 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 the MVP caliber. Player. Yeah, exactly. Pippen in, in his best season. Come on. And I think what really does it for me, though, is not so much even just the talent, but seeing how they've responded to that talent being out. So yeah. when Kevin Durant drops out, the one because pre- we're going to talk about Iggy anyway, so we can go ahead and start going yeah. that direction. People forget that Iggy was a really good player back in the day. Yeah, they forget and, about uh, six, 76 a day. So. Yeah, yeah. And that he, again, like we said last week, most of his uh, career has been spent playing on in a role, kind of like in a marginalized yeah, yeah. role for a team. Right. And uh, that's been uh, exaggerated with the Warriors. That's why people are confused about what's now the thing on Twitter going around is that people are finally catching on to the Hall of Fame thing, which... I picked up on that like a year ago because I said, okay, yeah, he already had the gold medal, yeah. then the finals MVP, and I'm like, he's going to keep winning rings on this team. So right. when we start talking about him being a Hall of Famer, but it's not just that because somebody on Twitter didn't understand why, okay, if Iggy's going to be a Hall of Famer, why, would not, why wouldn't Robert Ori be a Hall of Famer? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you, you sound like you had something okay, to say do, there. Okay, uh, because... We knew what Andre Iguodala was before he joined the Warriors. Yeah, that. Like he had, he had a, he had a resume. He was the best player on on two teams. Mm-hmm. And um, he get All Star. I don't know Robert Horry. I don't think Robert Horry had All Star selections. I Pretty doubt sure he had. Don't Pretty have sure. any. And um, and plus, 
Iguodala is also a great two way player. Like he, you know, he got it final in FIFA guarding the best player in the league. Exactly. Hori can't say that. Hori just came in and make those big shots. So I don't, I don't see the comparison between the two. And see, my whole thing is that when people bring up the the Robert Hori thing, it's normally in some sassy response about rings. Yes, rings. And so with with Hori, I get okay. Seven championships is amazing, but this is where it comes into understanding what role each player actually played. Right. He was named Big Shot Bob or Rob whatever for a reason. Yeah, it's because he was known for that moment. It was always yeah, a moment. But moment, I think yeah. what people aren't uh, paying attention to is you got to watch Iggy on the floor throughout like the whole time. It's yeah, not just he minutes. pops up and hits a three at the end. That's right, not right. that's not Iggy's role. Iggy is very. They almost lost to the Rockets last year because Iggy was gone. That's how important he was yeah, to yeah. that team. Is it, you know, we're talking about the most talented team or whatever. They lost Iggy, and all of a sudden their rotation was different. Right. He does a lot of things that people don't pay attention to. Yeah, like first of all, he already got. Of course, he, he already have a, a Robert Horry moment, that three. Robert, he has what? Robert Horry moment was that three. Yeah, yeah, that but three was But you also remember the, uh, the strip from Dane? And the, the strip, uh, yeah, the, the yeah, final, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dane, it's things like on, that. Like, what I'm on. saying is yeah, yeah, he consistently has those things where he's guarding yeah. you know, other teams' best yeah, player. I, yeah, I won't even put those two in the same. Yeah, it's not the same thing at all. Yeah, Horry and Bill Russell come up in the rings conversation. Yeah, yeah, and it's always like, oh, no what disrespect about? to the, you know, Bill Russell, yeah. a boxing guy here, but... <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's only that's when they bring on them two guys. Exactly. It's, it's, or he's one of those sixty random sixty players. What do you mean? With eight championships, we're going on the hell they are. Hey, and, and you know what? I, I don't want to diminish what he did because like insane. being he there for the moment, because hitting the big shot in the big moment, a lot of people can't do that. So that was that a special shit, thing. Hey, hey man, yeah, I know. Like, Very special thing. Yeah. But that's him not being in the Hall of Fame is people understanding context. Right. Like the seven rings is a lot to do with like right place at the right time. Absolutely. Whereas with Iguodala, I feel like you take Iguodala off of, out of this Warriors dynasty, they probably aren't where they are right now. Talking about working on their fourth championship in five years. Okay. I'm not, yeah, I'm not disrespecting Horry. Either. I'm a Laker guy, so I know yeah, that yeah. shot he made at the Kobe and Shaq miss. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, hey, yeah, a good but, player back in the day. I just think yeah. Iggy was consistently, you know, consistently yeah. more. And he, and great yeah, Iggy Dollar proved that he was a great player without this team. Yeah, he was on. you know, Rock, because, Horry was with Rockets and the Spurs and Lakers. Because so like, I can man. see somebody else stepping up in Ori's role and having seven championships, like play, replay Ori's career and whatever, and put these players in the same spots. I can see somebody ending up with seven championships if you play for yeah. the Lakers and the Spurs. Okay, difference is, take Iggy out of 2015 with the Warriors. Even with Kevin Love and Kyrie out, the Warriors wouldn't have won. They would not have won. He was very instrumental in uh, disrupting LeBron James. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People look at LeBron's numbers and they say, oh, but what did Iggy do? But, like, look at the numbers when he defended him. You keep hearing some Barnes on LeBron in those moments or somebody else, those are probably made shots. Some things you got to watch, man. Yeah, exactly. Cavaliers could have won that series. Uh, They they wouldn't have made the finals last year. Did he end up, uh, Iggy ended up coming back in the series, right? And what, what was Did he end up coming back in the Rocket series last year? Uh, I can't remember if he ended up playing again or not. But anyways, I think that series got closer. I think it got a little bit more tighter once he didn't play. Is my point with that? Right, right. My point with that. He played the whole series, just like Steve Kerr said. I don't think that wouldn't have been. I don't think that would have been the same thing. So yeah, that's 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 my difference between Iggy and uh, yeah. Ori. And he but he is a Hall of Famer. He's not a first ballot. In, in, yeah, maybe not first ballot. Head. That's fine. But, but he's a Hall of Famer. I had somebody retweet my uh, thing. But Ben Wallace got it being a dog. I'm yeah, tired of this. I'm yeah. tired of this. I Which think is, he got some some type. He must got some dirt or something. <laughs> the fact that they ain't put him in yet. How many Defensive Player of the Year? Four. Yeah, and then a championship. That's easy basketball. I think Hall three of fame. straight, four straight. I don't know, four or three straight Defensive Player of the Year. Come on, man. Since we're on that subject, I don't think we've actually. What? How would you revive? This is kind of impromptu, but how would you revise the Hall of Fame? Because when you a think about it, a lot of people get a lot of people getting the hell up out of that. A lot of people get the fuck. You know, it's funny because they asked Iguodala about this, and he was like, "I don't care. Like, you get put in, and they put somebody else in, and it replaces you." And like, I don't know what that remembers. means. What do you mean replaces you? Well, he just means like nobody remembers who's in the Hall of Fame because it's always somebody getting in. It's always like all types of players getting in. I, I, that's how I took away. And he's still gonna cry his, uh, his speech though. Yeah. So, oh yeah, because it's like you know you spend your whole life. Yeah. Yeah, that's the highest. That be the whole world. You 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 you're, you're a statue now. You're but I, I feel like yeah, this is problematic. More and maybe people are maybe people are realizing it more. But it's problematic because NBA players are already we we accept them as the best in the on the entire planet. Right. 
so that right there already lowers the bar significantly significantly for what they have to do to be in the basketball hall of fame right because right. we're talking about guys like you're ranking them with guys like oscar schmidt you heard of him before yeah i heard of him. yeah yeah the guys like uh you know people Pacers, who played right? overseas and all that i think he's pacer so like uh, the reason this this came up for me is because you were just talking about ben wallace it sounds like yeah. four defensive player of the years in a championship is automatic basketball hall of fame automatic, now right? then yeah, but if you raise the bar and say nba hall of fame then maybe it becomes a bit more yeah, difficult. Like the nfl I know you NFL, but NFL is hard to get in the Hall of Fame. Right, you got to be exceptional. You can't have this any random old. He was a locker room presence, nah. But yeah, yeah. basketball, you got international aspect. You know the impact on I don't know kids. And NFL. how and how would you revise it to make it more difficult? Again, make for it the NBA, NBA, of course. Uh-huh. Like, cut all that. It's cool what you donated, but fam, <laughs> what, you donate? like, what you done on the court? And also, I think I, th- I remember. I think a couple of years I gave you like a. Uh, Requirement. You gotta have certain all stars. You gotta have certain, you know, statistical numbers, stuff like that. I agree. I agree. You gotta have something like, oh, like because you're like, oh, he's in the Hall of Fame, but he also another guy also Hall of Fame. Like right. the guys in the '60s, man. I'm trying to tell you, I get the hell up <laughs> out of here. Man. Eric, got you got a vendetta against the '60s. I'm just bro. saying, like. <laughs> We got we got to play with eight championships, but we don't know who, who are them. You know they were Bill Russell. Yeah, so. and that's the other. You know that's the other hard part, right? Is like a player in the '60s probably could have got in a bit easier than a player now. Yeah, like it's it like eight or in the '70s though. or whatever. Because if you again, you were part of that Celtics championship team, and right. like come on, you in here? Like I'm, I'm not even sure they had an international like teams back in the '60s. I don't know. It probably did, but yeah. it wasn't a. Their bar was so low. Yeah, I, w- I would love. I don't know. I don't know if basketball because at this point, you know, especially with Adam Silver, he don't want to upset anybody. I feel like he, of course, he might. He you a know, peacemaker. So if you if you start if you redo the Hall of Fame and all of a sudden some people not in there, that's going to cause problems. Oh, you so. don't take people out. That's just wild. Oh, so you're not taking people out? Nah, yeah. you can't. Uh, you can't. Yeah, like, I know you had your own moment, but <laughs> give me a get ring that back. back. <laughs> give me that ring back, Lee. <laughs> I need that get ring that back. back yeah. <laughs> but not like, uh, uh, but like this. You know, going forward is make a more. You know, okay, I can see why he in the Hall of Fame because Ben Wallace, Ben Wallace got a better case than C. Webb. You know, um, mm, does he? He got a better resume, man. Yeah, as far as awards have won and stuff like that. I'm just saying, yeah, like, okay. if you look at C. Webb, like, like even his career numbers is. Is, is, is it C. Webb got in? He's not in. He's not in yet. Nah. Yeah, he's not. You're right. You got to apologize for that Michigan Fat Five situation. No one need, yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. Right, right. Yeah, you know, Jalen Rose got a vendetta against him. All crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Some shit happened like 30 something years yeah. ago and it's still in a college game. I think I be calling people, uh, the people that, you know, give money to like. Uh, Donors? He didn't pull this illegal. I think he got in uh, trouble for lying, for perjury. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. For something money. Yeah. But everybody defending, but Chris Ewell, like, I don't know that guy. I don't know who that was. <laughs> I think he died. His fam- family's in tam- turmoil. I don't know. Yeah. So that's why I don't really, I don't, I don't really like to think why he's not in the hall. Yeah. With the hall, I'll, I'll be happy if they ever do do something with it. Because I do get yeah. tired also of, like, you know, revisionist history. We look back when they're trying to boost a player up and be like, oh, he played this many Hall of Famers. It's like, but that, you know, when you just, that's like, weird. that blanket statement, like, when you say a million Hall of Famers they played, but, okay, let's look at who they actually were and why yeah. they're actually in there. Yeah, he, he played, he played uh, Charles Barkley, yeah, 90, when he was, like, with the Rockets. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's what they do, right? They'll take an uh, old team and be like, well, that team had six Hall of Famers. Yeah, like, 10 gee, years gee, ago. He was 40 years old. <laughs> like, <laughs> He wasn't at his Hall of Fame peak. Not at all, man. Like, I think I, I, I can already see this happening, right? Like, uh, years down the road, they're going to look back at the 2012 Thunder and say, oh, yeah, that team had three Hall of Famers, Westbrook, yeah, Harden, right, and Durant. Right, right. It's not even close. That not doesn't represent what that 2012 Thunder actually were at all. Right, not like, at all, man. Yeah, so Hall of Fame needs to be redone. We can agree on that. Yeah. All right, so moving on, maybe it was because I had um, – I, I had a picture of Carmelo Anthony on my Instagram when I asked for uh, podcast questions, but people really wanted to know about Melo. There was a couple of questions about him. Uh, I guess we'll start with this one because this is a funny, well, the fun one. And I guess this was a conversation people were having during the season. And one guy asked, who's better for the Nuggets all time, Carmelo Anthony or Nikola Jokic? Because they were already having that conversation. I need some context. What do you mean? Well, to my understanding, um, like has Jokic already passed? He's already moved up in the all-time Nuggets ranking over Carmelo. Yeah, he went to. Hey, Melo went to Western Conference Finals, bro. Yeah, Melo went to the Conference Finals. Yeah, he gave them many good years too. Yeah, he had what seven, seven. <sighs> yeah, yeah. From I the time he was seven. drafted to about twenty ten, yeah. yeah. He had seven great years. Like, uh, yeah, I didn't chill with that, bro. Yeah, Melo. Yeah, because we're gonna talk all about Melo. You know, like, Melo getting, you know, he getting drugged through the mud right now. Exactly. So. Yeah. So now we start like diminishing things that he did. 
Could it's have, like, could have been rookie of the year. If yeah, wasn't, very, you know, high yeah. beast and LeBron. Up. That was a very realistic thing that could happen. Nah, Joker gotta have a couple. More, Joker's gotta have a couple more years doing what this, doing what he do now to have that, to have that conversation. Yeah, because uh, I feel like. Um, you know, again, you forget how much time is passing. Like, next year is 2020 already. So, yeah. you, you start to forget, like, you know, maybe there wasn't... There's a lot of people who might have missed that stretch from 2003 to 2010 yeah. when Carmelo yeah. was playing. Like, that's starting uh-huh. to become a long time ago. So, right. people you know, who only watch his Nick days don't really understand what all, all of that was about. How many seasons has Jokic been on the map? On the Nuggets? Uh, on the map? Yeah. On the map, made, I would say he was on the though. map maybe before a lot of people paying attention probably around 2017, I would say. So two years. On the map, yeah, on the map, and then this year was like his best year, obviously, yeah. and now okay. he's really out there because he's made the All NBA team, the uh, first team too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Something Melo never had done. Uh-huh. That's, yeah, and that, isn't that crazy from that people who crazy. watch Melo? But hey, again, you came at a it, tough time. At a time it was positions like yeah. Pacific, and plus you had Braun, dude. Yeah, and imagine you come at a time where Braun, Kobe, Wade, right. like bro. So I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure a lot of players they get it because who they like T Mac probably could get none because of. Yeah, it's Kobe. difficult. I, I I think he did. I think T Mac might have got one, but I get what your point. Yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah I, that's a very tough. Two thousands is a tough time to break yeah, through. You <laughs> like, feel like you had to get a center, you had to get a power mm-hmm. forward, so you couldn't have. Now you can have like two point guards the first team. So what co- what exactly causes the mellow disrespect? Because it's like a mob mentality on him, really. Is well, what goes on now we have advanced analytics, so people <laughs> treat it like it's the Bible, so they see how he's effective with those numbers. And plus, when a team doing bad, you gotta go, you gotta pick a player that I guess it's, it tells you like, yeah, he's not playing good. So when it came to, I think when it started, it started with the Thunder, or it started right before that. Well, yeah, I, I would say the you, okay because when he went to the Thunder, that was a big deal. People thought he could still yeah, play. Yeah, got him in the OK three uh, <laughs> movement. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was. Oh yeah, I was. All I called that. it. I called it a unique big three, but I said I didn't know how it was gonna work because man, I, I I'd never seen three perimeter players like that before man, together. I was so damn hype, man. Plus you, were, you had I, the hoodie mellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That hoodie, hoodie mellow, mellow was a thing. That was sensational. So you had hoodie mellow, on man. Wouldn't I don't think he missed a shot that summer. Nah, <laughs> so that's when hoodie mellow was born. So I was super hype. I was, I was on that train hard right but i think it started then because you know he wasn't the role they wanted him to be in he's not a spot up shooter you know a defensive lie be the defensive liability yeah you don't rebound no more you know, as much slow yeah so all the guy heightened and plus that's and they you know and the people turned into the thunder because that's supposed to be the year they do something what you say? People, the whole world plans to the thunder because they was able to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That year, so that, all the everything was on the um, microscope. So. Isn't that crazy? Like, cause I think people are gonna forget that. Like when Melo signed with the Thunder, people weren't saying like, "Oh, this is a washed up Melo." Like he, that, that wasn't the idea back I ain't then. I seen that one. Um, Article saying, "Oh, this is yeah, watch the melody. It, it was a whole okay." And people might forget that because it was such a bad year for them, and they got put out in the first round. People might look back and think, "Like, oh, there, there was no hype. They just got like a mellow shell, and they understood that nobody right. really." People might have thought something a certain way about Melo back then, but it wasn't strong like it is. Well, now. some of the stuff might be true, like, but I didn't hear nobody say it. Yeah, yeah. Like I remember all the one of the greatest offensive weapons over, 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 over. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like they just got like a a, a corpse. Is what I'm saying. That's nah, what nobody, nobody was saying. Oh, they just got Melo's corpse. It wasn't right. until after the season where it was like, okay, the, people think Melo's a corpse now. Yeah. Yeah. So after they, after after that, that's when the whole. He started piling on his name like that. Man. And I really, I, I want, I really want a book from Carmelo Anthony explaining because yeah. I, I just don't understand like this, this spectacular like flame out at the end of his career, yeah. right? Because he was a top player throughout the two thousands. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Knicks traded all that for him, and for him to flame out like there's no like goodbye tour or nothing like that. It's just like he gets bounced around to teams, and then Houston let him go. I never even understood. There was never an explanation. Yeah. I, I don't Atlanta, think a real. Atlanta had him for like two weeks. Yeah, they had him for two weeks, and yeah. they, they just let him go, or they stopped playing, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I really would like a book from him because I don't understand exactly. I don't really understand the downfall, his downfall, yeah. really, other than like yeah, he you didn't. Because Wade going on his own terms, LeBron going on his own terms. Yeah. Of course, Bosch had health issues, but it wasn't because he couldn't play. Exactly. This is health, man. And players, like, uh, this is not a new thing. Players who were superstars once, they get older and they don't play as well. Paul Pierce yeah. got a little bit older. He just found roles on different teams. Kevin Garnett got a little bit older. He wasn't good anymore. Like, players get Dirk Nowitzki stuck around for a while. So, like, this isn't a thing like Carmelo Anthony. Like, yeah, he's, he's gotten worse as he's gotten older. Yeah, that's a natural thing. But, like, for him to just, like, yeah. completely fill him out to where it's like well, he's 35 yeah. now. He might not but even be on the roster. But the problem was, uh, well, if you go by each one, of, like, for Dirk specifically, they didn't have no playoff aspirations. Uh, you know, he been his whole career, so he was going on his own terms. 
Mm-hmm. That's a different case. KG. Uh, he was I, a corpse. <laughs> KG was a corpse. When he, he was left. a corpse. Like, KG the only one I can really relate mellow because even Paul Pierce can shoot. Yeah, you know, so he had a role on certain teams. But that's a that's but a question. Throwing mellow ask. and like you put him in a championship team. So I mean, is that what yeah. you think now though? Because like, okay, Paul Pierce played roles like in the Wizards that year. They could have gone far that year. Well, I'm he saying he, he, his his role was to shoot. That was his role. Paul and it Pierce. seems like Mello was put on teams that were winning championship. Day. Right, like the Rockets. So he yeah. looking at him a little different. Yeah, and the Thunder too. Yeah, the Wizards. Right. Come on, what y'all was gonna do, dog? Well, that year they. Nah, were, that, 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 that was my nah. point. That's what I was saying, though. That year they they were almost in the conference well, finals. I'm bro. saying they like nobody, right, right no, the league, nobody like okay, Wizards going to be the. Fight. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. It's not like they were a championship team. Yeah, OKC okay, yeah. Rockets. You expect them to go far. So his role, his. Him not being the same was magnified. Yeah, because he's on teams that are like, yeah, they, we need a Dirk, championship. Nobody was, you know, Matt, Matt wasn't doing nothing. Mm-hmm. All, you know, Wizards wasn't going to go far, but the OKC, and especially Rockets, that was supposed to beat, you know. So it's basically like you're saying because of that, he's kind of like a fall That's man. That's why. If he was on like a team that didn't have that high expectations, no one would be looking at Melo like this. But the fact that he was in the, the brightest lights talking about, yeah, oh, it was Melo fall. That's why we struggled to get the season. <laughs> Everybody playing trash in that uh, OKC series against Jazz. Oh yeah, that, that was a. That was well, a you know, Melo was a scapegoat, and Rockets. They the Rock were playing trash even after they right after they left left him. So it's not like you can't put it all on Melo feet. Yeah, and that's the part but, that I won in yeah. a, in the book because like again that was only like two weeks. Like yeah. it was only two weeks, and he from what I remember, like he didn't actually even play terrible in those two nah. weeks or whatever. It is that he on them teams where they looking for championships. So when you playing trash, you, you looking wild, man. Yeah, one of the rumors out there is that he he's unwilling to like accept his role or right. change his role. I don't know what KG what KG I don't know what KG was doing last what year. What Kevin Garnett was doing, yeah, mental worrying. Exactly, <laughs> mental worrying in Minnesota. Tim wasn't going nowhere. You said what? Tim wasn't going nowhere. Yeah, absolutely not. No. So I'm like, when you on a team, you looking for rings, and you out here playing like ass. So do you, so you think we've seen because this is a specific question people ask. You think we've seen the last of Carmelo? Uh, I didn't realize he's thirty five now. Like yeah, already, like yeah, he's, he's older than all. Well, he's not older than uh, Wade. But that's not a good look. Like you thirty five and already kind of like have had trouble staying in the league. Didn't really play this year. I don't understand. He never, for sure, he never took care of his body. Like he's not like ripped. He all looked like he just. Yeah, he was always carrying a little bit extra, wasn't he? Like but, he don't have no muscles. Like he don't look like he'd be working out. I felt like so. he, he kind of used that to his advantage at, at a point oh, in his post. career. Maybe when he could carry it. Yeah, when he was heavy yeah. back in like because he, he was. Heavy, but he was quick and everything. He had that quick second jump. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and nobody bite on that, that jab step no more. Man. Yeah, no, that's that's, <laughs> that's dead. See, that's the part. Nobody like, bite on that jab step. Yeah, man. like again, like I always bring up like the Instagram trainers I see with Carmelo, and, yeah. and like they want to convince you like he's still that guy. And I'm like, yeah, I, I'm all I'm all eyes, bro. I will I will watch. Like I want to see it. Melo Open Gym is terrified, boy. Yeah, yeah, no, Melo. <laughs> oh, Melo would be a Melo would just be a pickup game legend now, basically. Yeah, like, like, he said, bust anybody ass in a pickup 10, game. Fifteen, like. Hoodie Mellow 30 for 30. It was like yeah. this whole saga where he was like, you yeah. Know. 95 2k rating type shit but it is really sad to see one of our like childhood like stars yeah. go out like this because this is a terrible way to go it's out. crazy because when they both got drafted i picked mellow side like, everybody lebron i'm, I'm gonna go to uh, you were on mellow side back then yeah oh okay that's it so did you think mellow was gonna be a better career player than lebron uh when you picked his side back in like 2003 yeah to be honest mm. yeah because he already had the uh you know the championship at syracuse and you know he had a nice uh he had a nice shot Cause he was a better shooter than um, uh, LeBron coming in, so I just thought he would, you know, he'll last longer. But even though you know LeBron athletic was, you know, give from God. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I just, man, because I don't like people that be hyping, you know. Like yeah, but that athleticism, hype. it's just like watching Zion now, yeah, basically. Yeah, like. base. So I have to turn out, man. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I believe he will. Like I said, I'm, I'm confident too. But I guess I just picked Melo, man. I had to I had corn corn rolls too. <laughs> it was a corn roll connection. Yeah, man. Like I'm, I'm gonna go with Melo, man. I yeah. think. And plus, I was, hey, I was, I was, I feel like I was right in the rookie season. Well, yeah, because again, I'm like, oh look, look, I was right. Dude. Yeah, yeah. During the rookie year, yeah, he played great, and then LeBron like got like. Yeah. Ridiculously better in like two years. Yeah, when 06 came, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I was tripping. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you imagine if LeBron had been drafted to the Nuggets instead of uh, instead of Carmelo? That, that would have been crazy because, like, that they was a decent. They still lost in the what? Western Conference Final. I ain't trying to know. I don't want to They still would have lost in the Conference Final. What's the Conference Final? Oh, yeah? yeah. You, don't think, you don't think nothing changes if LeBron nah, gets to go with that Not that, that season. Oh no, 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 not that. Yeah, no, no. okay. The the Nuggets. I don't think they made the conference finals in their first. They didn't make the conference finals in their first season. I'm not. That's not what we're talking about. I oh, said okay. if I said if LeBron had been drafted with the Nuggets because it was a better overall team to start out. Yeah, with. it would be a little different. 
Because, you know, you end, up getting, like, a lot, you end up getting, like, Marcus Canby and, like, you know. It's, <laughs> it's hard to say because nobody going to pick LeBron in a draft. Oh, oh no, no. Uh, I meant, like, if the Nuggets wound up with the first pick instead of. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Instead of Cleveland. Cleveland yeah. Because that's something that they were, all, they were up there. Like, third yeah, pick. Yeah. Yeah. It would have waited. It would change the course of history. Yeah, that would have changed a lot. Because LeBron I don't actually, think LeBron would have had a, uh, this type of tenure he had, though. What LeBron, do you mean? Like, the eight final things. Oh, no. You know, the East thing. You now, know, you started but, West. West is a wild. But you still had Spurs there. You had you oh, know, yeah. Kings there. You know, Lakers. Speaking of that, this is just rant. This, this came to me. Why do you think teams don't mimic the Spurs more? You know, because like, yeah, I mean? feel like these, this is really. So, you got the Spurs and Warriors, two of the most successful teams in the last, like, decade or whatever. And it's, you know, it's defined roles, straight personnel, ball movement. Man. Personnel is hard to find, man. The personnel is hard to find. Curry is a different style. Well, no, okay, okay. You can't mimic the Warriors like that. I'm talking well, about I'm their saying, style, though. Their style oh, the is, co- is constant style. movement. Yeah, constant yeah, movement, yeah. constant ball movement, constant off ball movement. You go back to the 2014 Spurs, it's like, it's movement. It seems like kind of basic basketball stuff is why the Spurs are always good. Well, I also go by personnel because, yeah, constant movement, but I don't have no, don't have no, I don't know, man. I don't know. You, got, it's, you, you, make, a, you, make, a t- you make a system around who you have. That is very true. You know what I mean? That is very it's true. Not, I don't think a lot of teams can do that type of style. Yeah, and it also comes down probably to uh, players being willing to accept certain roles as well. Yeah, too, I'm saying, like, like, some people got egos, dog. Yeah, like, did you hear the part where Gilbert Arena said that he was, like, actively rooting for his uh, teammates to fail so, like, he could get more minutes or whatever? Well, hey, be like that. Cause maybe, they, maybe they said, because <laughs> it's true. I do believe when you're not on a team, you injured, and you you do want, you want your team to win, but you want them to struggle. So to you think to show your absence, to, to show like okay he was really valuable. So you think right now Kevin Durant is ho- it, you think he, no no no, nah. no let me, let me, I just but he gave our close just not blow. The out. games are close yeah without Kevin. Well Durant. I guess he like I don't mind an over overtime or two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't mind being in foul trouble. Yeah, because I I don't think the perfect player really exists where there's just like except Tim Duncan he yeah, had no ego. Yeah, Tim, Tim Duncan had no ego, yeah. but. Uh, is I think that's very difficult, especially because these guys come from like the A, you know, people come They're from the competitors, system, man. and yeah, competitors, and you know, you you all you used to being the best, you know, throughout yeah. your life. So egos are there, egos are there regardless. So, but so I, yeah. I do, I do, I truly believe KD would like, would like them to struggle a little bit more. You do, yeah, because <laughs> it would show, it would show his, you know, his value. Because I just can't imagine a player as good, like say, if Kevin Durant didn't play at all in this series, I can't imagine a, a player as good as Kevin Durant with a championship that he didn't like play for. You know what I mean? It, it hurts you when your team is good out. Yeah, and it would especially hurt to be Kevin Durant and have uh, one of your three rings you didn't even play for, you didn't touch the court for. Like that's unheard of. A player as good as KD to have a ring yeah. that he wasn't on the court for. Right. That's unheard. I, that, I don't think has that ever happened. Like you weren't. Not you just didn't play his caliber. No. Yeah, you didn't play one time in the series, and you have a ring there. Like I don't understand how you celebrate that ring. I don't understand how you like. Yeah. I, I don't. I wouldn't understand. <laughs> that would look crazy. I understand he would have missed like play away game one and got injured, but he right. didn't play no games. So. Exactly. Yeah, that that would look wild. Cousin got more value in his championship than you. Man. And cousins, yeah, he made it. He made an impact actually. He came. I all game. season looking if he played good this rest of this. Season. Yeah, with cousins, um, you know, so far it, it's real hard to judge where he is, right? Because you're on hard. Golden State and uh, you're not gonna get the ball as much. You don't get not those same all. post touches. You don't get no. the same. You don't. The focal point is not you at all, and you not don't even get the same minutes. So it's really hard to judge where he's at. He's had the two injuries now, the torn, I guess, torn quad. How the fuck you come back from a torn quad in in a month and a half? I I, don't know, man. I don't understand what happened there. That's another mystery. But then the Achilles, really hard to judge where he's at. But he's definitely so far done himself a favor in game two because that that he actually made a difference. Like, I didn't know if Cousins was going to make a difference coming in. I knew an extra body would help regardless because, like, they, they depth chart. But he actually made an active difference that game, though, with his activity out there. But, and um, but yeah, going into this offseason, I mean, his money not gonna be the same regardless. Like, I don't see anybody giving Cousins like a ridiculous bag. I don't even think there's a market like that. No, if he if he do play good, like he playing like how he played uh the game two, and they're showing his value. I think he take another pay cut for, for the Warriors. And, I was about to say that. Yeah. yeah, I'm starting to see a scenario where Cousins stays with the Warriors regardless yeah. of where anyone else goes this season. Just no. because, um, again, think when Katie do leads, you got more, you got a bigger role now. Yeah, so. there's that. There's the fact that again, with the injury he had in the playoffs, and the fact that I don't think we've been able to accurately assess where he's actually at. Like, does it make sense for a team like the Lakers, who's looking for a second star to go sign Cousins, and you don't know if he's like that anymore, right. if he's ever going to be the same again? Yeah. So the best thing yeah. to him is to sign rewards, get in shape, and show him like, okay, 
Which was like, what this season was supposed to be, but he didn't get to play like most of it. Yeah. Like, he looked like he just looked out of shape and just slow, man. Yeah. If I was Cousins, I would stay with the Warriors at this point. Yeah. Especially because, like, even, if, yeah, because again, if Kevin Durant goes, which, uh, you know, a lot of people expect he will, again, your role will be bigger. Yeah. Plus, it. it great organization, great yeah. teammates. Like, I don't know what's your motivation if you're a cousin. Because you're not going to get that big bag you were looking no, for. You're anymore. not going to really win nowhere. Unless, yeah. Unless that, you to a team that's like. You're missing piece. Yeah, but. and I don't see the hundreds of millions coming anymore. Nah. Anybody, I I don't see that at all. Well, he did say that this these injuries did put stuff in perspective. Like you can you can lose everything. Oh yeah, in a minute. You yeah, know, he was like I'm pretty sure he was the best player, best center of the league when he went down that day. It was arguable. It was very and arguable. Nah, he didn't. Bam. Yeah, yeah. We don't know if he's capable. The bench. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, it, again, yeah. and that's for he actually started in game two, didn't he? I believe. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they're working him back. Um, yeah. yeah, Cousins ought to just stay with the Warriors at this he point. He must get in condition all season. Unless back. there's just something I, I, I'm missing with the cap where they absolutely just can't pay him anything except like pennies or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like we got a million dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out Unless there's something like that, I think it's make because I had heard during the season he was already thinking about it too. He had started yeah. to consider that. So well, but Katie Lee, you got you know you got you got money. So yeah, I'm starting I'm starting to see a scenario where he might he might be there. Yeah, and does. again, like I said, we're gonna have to worry about the Warriors. Forever, you got to keep worrying about. I know I gonna look at cousin differently because we know he's not the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cousin, yeah, that's the name different. at this point. Yeah, when you signed last summer, I was like, my brain couldn't process that. Yeah. What, what was your reaction when you heard that last summer when you saw the, the Marcus Cousins? I think I, I, I learned it on um, the app, yeah, the NBA app, and, all, and it, you know it showed a little piece. Uh-huh. It said the Marcus Cousins uh, signed with, and it said a W. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Open that! I like the Wizards. The uh-huh. <laughs> boy, yo, I, I yeah, that's that hit me harder than I, I think any move ever in free yeah. agency. I saw your video. You nah, just sit yeah. in the chair like no, because yeah. like I actually was shell. That, I, that's the only move I think I've ever been shell shocked from. Right, right. I shell shocked. I was like, okay, this is the Warriors. They just dominated the Cavaliers. We already yeah. talking about them as like this godly, like yeah, god tier yeah, yeah. yeah. entity. I seen cousins, and I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> For real, man. Yeah, because I didn't even see that as a possibility. I was like, how'd that even happen? <laughs> no, I don't know. That's that's crazy. That man. was, yeah. I never seen nothing like that. But yeah. it didn't, you know, like a lot of people said, it wouldn't yeah. turn out the way we thought it would. It, it yeah. didn't. So, that's a funny thing. All right, so we're going to wrap this podcast up with one more topic. This was a piece of news that came out. We're talking about Bradley Beal possibly being traded from the Wizards. Thank God, because he is a gym. He has a, he had a great season. Yeah, I saw did. something like he had, he was running like the most miles per night of yeah. any NBA player. They're running him into the ground, and the Wizards aren't yeah. going. Well, he anywhere. averaged 20, 25? So, some month, he was up there. He was 20, up there. 20, he had an oh, 28, year. 28. Uh, no, 28 at the Wizards when we calculate probably like 25 yeah yeah so it was a great season for him and so now obviously with the Wizards you know their future up in in uh, jeopardy or whatever we always look at players like that as trade as, uh, on the trading block or looking at them uh, going somewhere else in the future so the, one of the names that came out this week was the Oklahoma City Thunder and the first thing I thought what the hell is the Thunder gonna trade Do for not Bradley know. Beal like what was even a, besides Stephen Adams? What even could you entice him? That have to be a three team trade. I would Adam, assume. Yeah, it got to be a three team. Yeah, trade. absolutely, have to be a three. But I don't trade. know what 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 OKC would even trade. Cause Adams, cause Adams did look kind of crazy um, this series. Like they didn't play in the last minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and plus he not it's, he don't want to take initiative on the offense. So I can see Adam getting moved, but OKC is a small market team, so they really base Lloyd around their players. I don't know they're gonna give it to Adams. But I thought Bradley was going to the Lakers. That's what I heard. I mean, every you know everybody gets thrown around yeah, the Lakers. Right. Man, everybody right. going to get traded. The Lakers be good it. next to LeBron. I mean, Bill would be great. Look good. You, but I, I have a, I have a sense that uh, Laker fans and you know you're a Laker fan. I, I have a sense that y'all would be disappointed if y'all ended up with. Well, I'm saying the only thing we get. Yeah. <laughs> but if, if y'all come in with if, just uh, Bill and that's it next year, yeah, I think y'all like, kind of mad about fam. that. Like. <laughs> You couldn't get Kimba either. I'm yeah, like, keep yeah. it with him. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. it look crazy. But if it's a, another piece, like we get the max player plus Bradley Bill, mm. you know, it's purple. You know, it's this parade. But if it's only Bradley Bill, uh, yeah. So if he were say, I, I don't know how he's gonna end up on the Thunder, but since that's the name out there, you end up on the Thunder again. We're looking at another perimeter trio like we thought they had when they had Melo. You know, like the, well, well, perimeter yeah. trios we never have. We never no. really have perimeter trios. Yeah, that yeah trios. And I'm right. talking about like I'm not talking about like the Warriors with Clay. Thompson. Thompson and uh, Kevin Durant because Clay Thompson is perfect for that. He run around, he catch the ball, he's good. He well, Bradley Beal is a good shooter too. He, he good, yeah, but he can do more than that though. He can go. Well, he, yeah. can, he can. Handle but I'm the saying ball like I, I can't compare it to Melo because come on. I'm not. No, I'm not comparing it to. I'm not comparing it to Melo. I'm saying in the no. fact that 
when Melo went to the Thunder, we were like, damn, we haven't seen this before. Like three yeah. quote unquote stars that's yeah, like yeah. handling the ball. It's gonna be kind of like you know, okay, Paul George, Westbrook, and Bradley Beal. Like, that's that's, I like that back quote. You like that? Maybe because they all <laughs> in their prime. Right. Yeah. So exactly. I, you that know, too. I look at it a little different than Melo. Yeah. That plus, too, yeah. Bradley can like catch and shoot. He can. He can. Dribble. He shoot. can. He can drive. I don't know about his defense. I'm not familiar with his defense, but and uh, I know the Thunder aren't asking this question because the thing with OKC at this point is they like they cast me all messed the fuck up, man. and they just gotta do something at this point because it's like uh, forever can't keep getting knocked out in the first round and like and having you gotta have a therapy intervention with uh, Westbrook, like fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was good and. um I don't know. Some Thunder fans would argue that like they get hurt every year. Like they're coming down the stretch. There's always some kind of injuries yeah. that slow them down. And uh, I do believe Paul George was an injured. This should be looking way different. But I still think a move would be in order as well, though, because like not even the first round. Like Fam, I don't know who you gonna move. Though. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I don't understand how that move's gonna shake. <laughs> if you get rid of Adams, man, that's like he wouldn't play. He wouldn't play with a good. Defense. But he's valuable still. I know his value was there. Like I don't. I didn't wish he had some type of offense, but yeah. Thunder, Thunder, That's a big dude. hole in the middle because Noel Nerlens on. Uh, fuck, you know, fuck out of here, man. See the Thunder being the market that they are. This is why it's so difficult for them because they they depend on things like these, like crazy yeah. streets. Like who knows though? I mean, we didn't know how Paul George was going to get to the Thunder. I remember somebody suggested that back before it happened, and I was like, "That's never going to happen." Paul George on the Thunder, like, I, yeah. like where you even get that from? And it right. happened. So stranger things have happened. Yeah, <laughs> stranger yeah. things have definitely happened. But low key, I am a, I do, I do like Thunder. I like. I don't know why. I just like them. I like the. I like the players. Yeah. Westbrook. I like his. You know, personality. Yeah, I like, I like Westbrook and George. Yeah, you know, so every time Thunder play, they're not playing against the Lakers. I do root for them. Right. Right. Yeah, but Bradley Beal would be a nice addition because they do need some help. I mean, they don't got on cap, so I don't know. And that'll just be is. another move that could potentially happen this summer. NBA twenty twenty is going to look like. Yeah. It, hopefully, if if all this stuff shakes out and people start moving, there's a, it, we're gonna have a totally different league next yeah. year. Yeah. Like yeah. power balance gonna be all over the place. I think it's gonna be fun though, cause LeBron will be right back in. The I got, mix. I got, one, I got one, one last uh, question. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Which one is the worst contract, John Wall or Chris Paul? Oh damn. Let's see. Let, so let's talk through this, cause Chris Paul is on a crazy like hundred plus million dollar contract, but he's going into the end of his career, so he's immovable, but he can still play some. John Wall is on that damn. Wait, he gonna be getting fifty million a year off a torn an explosive guard off of a torn Achilles, bro? Yeah. I don't know how you. I, I can't think of a worse contract than that. I can't. Okay. Torn Achilles changes every. Only player yeah. I ever known that came back the same from Wilkins. a torn Achilles was Dominique Wilkins. Yeah. John Wall is very explosive, speed, fast guard. Yeah. Achilles leads to other injuries. You cut. You know, people start compensating and yeah. all that, or that yeah. mental or whatever. It changes the body. Wall is probably not going to be the same after that, but he's going to be getting paid fifty million, so, and so you're not going to be able to move him. Who's nah, going to ever take that ever? Nah. Yeah, he didn't have a good season when he was down either. So Chris Paul is a bad contract, but John Wall is like a is like a death note, man. Yeah. That's like a that's like a <laughs> that's like a death sentence right now. Right, right. He was great. John and Wall I think was, it, it, it didn't kick in yet, did it? No, not yet. But my thing is that wasn't even a great contract when he was healthy, like no. fifty. Fifty a year. That was. You know, I, I think did he make All NBA team before, a year before or two years? Yeah, I think he made second team one. But fam, like there's only he like qualify. That, there's only a few people that, and again, it, that's what happens when you're somebody like Washington. What are you gonna do? Not pay him the money he wants? Cause like, yeah. what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, but now he didn't torn his Achilles and wasn't so even on the court. So it's John Wall had the worst contract in NBA. Yeah, he and he, yeah, and it's definitely worse than Chris Paul's. I'm sorry, Chris Paul might y'all might not like what he is anymore, but like he's still he pretty, can still like be productive. Yeah, man. like he still played pretty good in that last game against the yeah. Warriors. But like John Wall is never gonna be the same again, and he's gonna be making fifty million dollars at some point. Yo, boy, that think about oh no nah, man, <laughs> that's, that's that's wild, and you can't move that. He can't shoot anyway, so it's like you can't. Yeah, he's not a great shooter. Can't, can't even. Yeah. Damn. Like normally when you start a player when y'all are done with him you can just move him but like how you ever move John Wall how does that ever happen yeah. we don't the amnesty clause is not a thing anymore <laughs> as but far as I know yeah. yeah so uh, I think that's gonna go ahead and be it for this week we are close to an hour into this podcast we got the finals tonight I am looking forward this is I think this is the most entertaining finals we've had yeah since uh what, like 20, so far this is up to game three who knows shit could change real quick KD yeah. come back now it's it's, it's over <laughs> but uh. You know, this is more entertaining than I would say since the you say since the Spurs and Heat because like I everything else has yeah. had something weird going on like the injuries in 2015, 2016 they were just blowing each other out until well, like, game I th- yeah the Spurs and War I think it was even 
Yes, Spurs like and like uh, power wise. Talking about twenty fourteen. Yeah, like you didn't know who was going to win that. Yeah, yeah, definitely because of what happened the year before yeah, that. After so. that, it'd be like yeah, Warriors. yeah. When the injuries happened, you knew it was Warriors. Seventeen and eighteen was definitely Warriors. Right, right. Sixteen uh, again, it was a lot of blowouts until uh, the end of the series. Yeah. So far, this is kind of like the most fun, like suspenseful one. So. Yeah, uh, you got anything you want to say to wrap it nah, up? I'm good, you know what I mean? Good. You can find me on Instagram, uh, Snapchat, Twitter, Tumblr, Tinder, you know, for the <laughs> ladies, you know what I mean? Swipe right. <laughs> I'm out, man. I'm out here, man. All right, yeah. Uh, enjoy the finals, everybody. And hit the like button, comment, and sub if you want to catch us when we come on this show every Saturday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next weekend.